want to look at some more useful template defaults that will help remove obstacles from creativity and allow you to just sort of jump in quicker to songwriting and get to work. Now, region parameters here, with nothing selected, whatever we have set here become the default through parameters and applied to every new region that's recorded. And we're talking about MIDI here. Now, again, this may vary from style to style, but for me, I personally like to have a quantized value of 16, and I choose B, which leaves a little bit of an offset on the second and fourth, 16th note of each beat, but of course, your miles may vary, choose whatever you want. And I like choosing smart quantized, which isn't as strict. It does a really good job of interpreting your playing and bringing the notes that are out closer, but not absolutely perfect, and leaving the ones farther away alone. So I generally like that as a default, and by saving my template with this, any new region will default to having this applied. Now, maybe you're working on loop-based music and you want every, you're, you're recording maybe a little short one, two or four bar phrases and you want them all to be looped as a workflow kind of step in creating your arrangement. So you might want to enable that as well when you're setting your defaults. I personally don't want it on, but you can. And then of course we have additional settings here and these are just the defaults. I don't suggest any of these as MIDI through defaults, but maybe you want them. So that's one default. Now, another one that I want to look at is when we're recording audio, if you're using an audio interface that uses direct monitoring, there are some things we can do here to optimize that workflow. Now, direct monitoring means you monitor the signal, let's say of your microphone or your guitar, directly through your audio interface to your headphones without going through logic. And the advantage of that is there's no latency, but the disadvantage is you don't really get any processing. But there's a way of combining the best of both worlds. Now I'm going to hit Command, Comma to open the preferences. And in audio, on the general tab, I like having independent monitoring level for record enabled channel strips enabled. And by the way, this middle one, I don't know anyone who actually uses it. So it's good to leave it off. It's got to do with old GarageBand style monitoring. But I find it just sort of messes up my own understanding of signal flow. So I leave it off. But with independent monitoring level for record enabled channel strips enabled and software monitoring enabled, you can get the best of both worlds of software monitoring and hardware monitoring. So what that means is when you record enable a track, like for example, that I can pull that down and it'll have a separate memory for when it's in record enable status versus in playback mode. So let's say I'm playing back and I have my volume set and I decide I need to record on that channel. I can hit that and it'll be at a separate level. Now I like pulling them all the way down for when they're record enabled that way. What I can do is record. I'm not getting any of logics return into my headphones, but I'm only going to be getting the direct signal. And if the rest of the instruments are a little too loud in the headphones, I can just pull down these main headphone send levels that are going to the outputs on my audio interface. But let's say I want to hear reverb in my headphones. So I can dial up some send here to the reverb and it's going to go to this reverb bus, which is feeding the headphones. The problem is nothing's going to get here because this is all the way down. Well, the solution to that is to switch this to pre-fader. And now by doing that, you're hearing the reverb on my voice. I'm just going to mute it for the moment so you don't have to keep hearing it. I just wanted to illustrate that. But the idea is that by dialing that up, there we go. I just dialed it up and enabled. That's a nice automatic feature. But by doing this, we get the direct monitoring of the direct signal in our headphones and the reverb return also getting into our headphones. I'm just going to switch that back. I leave my defaults at post fader, but when I'm recording, I might switch it to pre fader like that. So I wanted to mention that. And then what I would do is it's a bit time consuming, but you do it once on your template and then it's done. Is each of these I would record enable and just bring them down like that so that they're all going to snap to the top and bottom. So let me just do that real quickly. And I'm going to go back to tracks mode. I don't need to worry about the all channels, basically just the preview and click. And you don't need to worry about this for instrument tracks. It's mainly for audio. So by doing these two things in advance, setting these faders and the region parameters, it should help keep logic out of the way as much as possible when you're creating. We'll continue with more in the next video.